Sparkbooks here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, The Power of Noticing, by Max H. Bazerman. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. As we muddle through day to day, we often don't see things that are right in front of us. Sometimes we are not paying enough attention, sometimes we subconsciously blind ourselves to things. The power of noticing is about learning to notice, a skill that is crucial in making important decisions as well as in being a great leader. Key idea number one, focusing on one item can make you miss other nuances. Blinders allow horses in congested cities to look only straight ahead. Thus, the horse may disregard traffic and people and concentrate on the road ahead. People can wear virtual blinders. Focusing on one thing makes us miss the basic things around us. A 1970s video by psychologist Ulrich Niso showed this phenomenon. A 19 a second footage shows black, and white-shirted people passing a basketball. Watch the clip and count the white-shirted passers. Most people can concentrate and count passes. However, most viewers would declare nothing weird happened in the video. Strange things happen. A black-clad woman with an umbrella passes the ball as the players do. Most viewers forget this because they're counting passes. Counting passes can make us miss other things. Inattentional blindness. Inattentional blindness is treatable we must observe. Notice that umbrella carrying woman. It means focusing without losing sight of other things. In the following sparks, you'll learn how noticing can help you avoid careless mistakes and become a successful leader. Key idea number two, the challenger catastrophe shows why details matter. You miss the woman with the umbrella in the video no big deal. Missing details in other cases can be considerably more serious. One example is the 1986 Challenger accident. NASA engineers worried about the launch day's temperature before the space shuttle's flight. Seven of 24 engineering simulations failed. NASA prioritized the 724 failure rate. Some engineers thought the risk was significant, while others thought it was low. Despite worries, the launch proceeded. One of the worst aerospace disasters, the Challenger exploded, killing all seven crew members. The expedition failed despite 1724 odds. Engineers missed a vital element that could have prevented the accident. They ignored the temperature conditions of the successful simulations because they focused on the seven failures. If they had noticed, all successful simulations were done at temperatures above 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Challenger launched in 40 degree weather. Engineers would have seen more clearly if they had focused on successful tests rather than failed ones. Challenger launched with a 99% risk of failure, not 30%. Overfocusing on irrelevant details caused the Challenger accident. Unfortunately, there are other types of blindness. Key idea number three, because they won, baseball management didn't see players doping. What would you do if you caught your boss taking off his supplies? Would you report her? Do nothing? Leadership requires avoiding motivational blindness. You can ignore hazards as well as self-interest. Often, you do nothing. You're not alone. We ignore occurrences when it benefits us. Reporting your supervisor is serious. When your interests are implicated, it's hard to be impartial. Motivational blindness describes this. Sports is full with motivational blindness. You'll see an opponent's fouls more often, but your own teams less often. Fans are too invested in winning to view a game objectively. Focusing on a broader aim can make us blind to undesirable behavior. From 1998 to 2001, Major League Baseball used steroids. Players used performance-enhancing substances at the time. Sluggers averaged 40 for home runs from 1991 to 1994. Ten pros beat this average in 1998. Eight players broke the 1999 record. In 2000, six players beat the record. In 2001, nine did. Managers and coaches ignored this alarming trend. Even though doping was illegal and harmful, they just cared about winning. Leadership requires avoiding motivational blindness. You can ignore hazards as well as self-interest. Key idea number four, ask inquiries and enforce regulations to avoid motivated blindness. As we've seen with baseball managers, it's easier to dismiss obvious risks while you're winning. You can overcome motivational blindness. This helps us notice what we should. Good leaders must be vigilant to avoid motivational blindness and its consequences. In 2005, J.P. 
Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon appointed Ina Drew as CIO. Drew's high-risk trades increased business profits. Due to revenues, Dimon ignored the hazards. Dimon examined Drew's strategy too late. Risky trades cost the corporation $6.2 billion in one month. How can we learn? Dimon said his biggest lesson was not to get comfortable when you're successful. Avoid motivational blindness. Always inquire. Your success. How? Sustainable. Risks. Auditing firms use self-imposed norms to reduce motivated bias. Auditing businesses risk motivational blindness since they profit from saving corporations money. Thus, concealing accounting fraud may benefit them. Additionally, satisfied clients mean more work. Auditing businesses follow simple criteria to keep on track. Auditors can't work on the same account or for a company they audited for a long time to avoid getting too close to customers. This helps us notice what we should. Good leaders must be vigilant to avoid motivational blindness and its consequences. Key idea number five, don't let a salesperson sway you stick to your guidelines. Politicians, magicians, and salespeople share what? They master deception. Salespeople rarely mislead, unlike politicians or magicians. We trust shop salespeople's product descriptions. Don't. Salespeople try to get us to spend as much as possible, which can deter us from what we really desire. Logical thinking prevents misdirection. Don't be swayed, stay calm. Remember? Remember your goals. Purchase a TV. Remember that you're there for a TV, not a salesperson spiel or coffee machine discounts. Second, determine your objective's key criteria. Want an HD or Wi-Fi TV? Do you prefer a cheaper, basic model? This prevents you from being sold unnecessary features. Evaluate your choices. Don't get sidetracked by the salesperson. Is a TV watching computer acceptable? No TV, a high-tech TV, unless affordability was a factor. Following these procedures will help you prevent misdirection and regrettable mistakes. Key idea number six, overconfidence makes manipulation easier, but tiny mistakes become big rapidly. Corporate meltdowns like Enron's may seem like one giant mistake. Most large failures stem from many tiny mistakes compounded over time. Even subtle changes can be missed. If you drop a frog into boiling water, it will jump out to rescue itself. The frog will stay put until it dies if you slowly heat cold water to boiling. A slow temperature fluctuation fools the frog. Overconfidence can blind us to mistakes or promote them. Take an accomplished executive. She discovers an accounting error. She may either confess or cover up. The executive thinks making a tiny modification is insignificant and may be even justified because she'll reverse it with next period's earnings. If the executive fails in the next accounting period, she may manipulate the data again. The minor change grows this time. After a tiny mistake, huge fraud ensued. Catherine Schrand and Sarah Zekman studied fraud investigated companies for seven years. In 75% of cases, overconfident CEOs distorted figures when their optimism wasn't supported by data. The researchers studied Tyco International, HealthSouth, and Enron, showing that ignoring tiny mistakes can lead to systemic failure. Key idea number seven, consider what's missing while making a decision. Focusing on what's happening or what you're doing is easy. Have you considered what's missing or what you're not doing? You'll be surprised how much you can learn by noticing things that haven't happened. Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes investigates John Straker's murder and horse theft. The police assumed the murderer entered the barn without disturbing Straker's guard dog and stole the horse. After suddenly running into Straker, the suspect beat him to death and fled. Holmes discovers that the horse killed Straker. Examining what didn't happen revealed this. Why didn't the guard dog bark? The dog must have known the horse thief. Straker alone could do it. Missing details might help you assess if something is worthwhile. Stop and ponder before taking an offer that seems too good to be true. What's behind the buzz? Beware of the bargain of a lifetime trap. Used cars teach caution. Why is the car for sale if it's cheap and in fantastic condition? Why so cheap? The car may be resting below. Skepticism improves decision making. Notice what's missing rather than barking dogs. Key idea number eight, consider indirect effects of any decision. While Walmart's prices draw shoppers, few people contemplate the indirect effects of shopping at Walmart. 
Suppliers like Walmart are under such pressure to supply products at low prices that safety issues are regularly ignored. In the 2000s, Blitz USA supplied Walmart with a gas can model that prevented flames from entering. Blitz has several lawsuits over this issue, prompting the product revamp. Blitz rebuilt it with fewer safety criteria so Walmart will sell it. When choosing a cheaper product, ask, what corners were taken to make it so cheap? Standards compromised. Is anyone at risk? Good leaders must recognize indirect harm from decisions. Sears 1990's choice illustrates indirect repercussions. Sears required auto repair workers to sell $147 per hour. The quota prompted personnel to sell customers needless fixes and equipment to meet their target. Sears should have considered motivation with a quota system. Management solely considered money, not how the policy would encourage staff to cheat. Key idea number nine, ignoring disaster warnings leads to predictable surprises. Even with all the data, we can miss a prediction. Predictable surprises occur, US. Airlines also pay millions to prevent the government from addressing security vulnerabilities, fearing it would frighten away customers. On September 11, 2001, hijackers crashed to planes into the World Trade Center. Predictable surprises occur when key people know about a tragedy and its risks but don't respond. Katrina was a predicted surprise. The Houston Chronicle stated in 2001 that New Orleans was sinking and losing its hurricane buffer, making it vulnerable to a major storm. In 2004, FEMA listed a New Orleans hurricane as one of the top three national disasters. They claimed the U.S. government would be unprepared for such an occurrence. Hurricane Katrina attacked New Orleans in 2005, an expected surprise. U.S. airport security is another Katrina-like calamity. These steps can prevent predicted surprises. Recognize the threat. Increased security breaches in the 1990s should have alerted airports to tighten security. Prioritize threats. Armed groups threatened the U.S. as security failures escalated. Vice President Al Gore proposed forming a commission to strengthen airport security to combat the threats. Act. Despite the vice president's best efforts, the FAA opposed the commission's amendments. U.S. Airlines also paid millions to prevent the government from addressing security vulnerabilities, fearing it would frighten away customers. On September 11, 2001, hijackers crashed to planes into the World Trade Center. Key idea number 10, leaders must be excellent observers. How do you start noticing? Focus is crucial, but noticing is preferable for key judgments. Be a great observer. First-class noticers are less biased and more open to the data. They follow the silent dogs and avoid misdirection. They avoid anticipated surprises and distrust anything too good to be true. They approach decision-making as an impartial outsider. They prioritize the proper choice over their own interests. A good observer makes a better leader. Start using what you learned. Try again if you fail. First-class noticers learn from their failures rather than quitting. Find out what you missed and how to avoid it. Keep learning and improving. Be a great leader through noticing. Remember that your followers may not be as perceptive as you are, so utilize your skills to help them. Focus is crucial, but noticing is preferable for key judgments. Focus is overrated. What we need is to notice. Being a good observer will help you make critical judgments, especially those that influence others. Leaders must notice. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.